Uh, with that said, uh, so first up, Ron. All right, thanks, Matt. Well, uh, it's fantastic to see a sellout crowd and a lot of excitement here about big data. Uh, before uh, I talk a little bit about me and, and my perspective, I'd love to know a little bit more about you. Um, who here is at a startup? All right, who here is not at a startup? So two thirds of the audience is nowhere. Okay, it's good to know. So the majority of those who raise their hand are at a startup. All right, and then one more question. Who here is uh, a technical person, a developer, a data analyst, a DBA? Who here is more on the business side? Okay, so we've got a good even mix of all different walks of life. Um, definitely uh, should be a good audience. So let, let me tell you a little bit about me and my company, Think Big Analytics. So I started Think Big, I'm the founding CEO, back almost three years ago, um, with really a mission of helping companies take advantage of big data and the new technologies that are available to create tremendous value in business. Um, I came to that because I had the, the good fortune to be the VP of engineering of a company called Quantcast. It's a pioneer in this space. Um, we started, at Quantcast, we started using Hadoop in 2006. We built some of our own NoSQL technology starting in 2007 and really changed the conversation and audience measurement. Back then, Nielsen and Comscore were saying, well, no one can directly measure the internet. It has to be measured through small panels and samples and careful statistical techniques. And we showed that you could measure every page view, every uh, view of an ad in order to be more accurate. We went on to do performance advertising, bidding on real-time ads, um, Today, Quantcast bids on tens of millions of uh, opportunities to show an ad a second at peak in milliseconds of latency uh, with 50 petabytes of data. The kind of teams that, we, that I led that were doing the engineering work to build those applications and do the science behind it, the inference and the predictive models, really showed me how much power there was in this new breed of technologies. Um, I think we've all heard a lot about big data, but to, to me, it's ultimately, there's this opportunity to really change the way businesses work and to harness the power of data to create results. And we created Think Big Analytics as a services firm that, that builds technology but fundamentally works with customers to assemble fantastic applications to drive analytic outcomes that were never before possible. So that's Think Big Analytics. Um, the, the other founders of the company were senior folks in a previous services firm that I was the founding CTO of back in the 90s called Seabridge that did something similar way back in the stone ages of the internet. Uh, when, when things like Java and uh, extranets and intranets were new, uh, new technologies. And you know, there's some interesting analogs and differences. So with that, maybe we uh, flip to the next slide. You know, one thing that I think is, is uh, we're seeing now is we're a few years into the big data revolution, that you know, maybe 10 years from the very first generalizations of specialized technology from web scale companies to, to more reusable systems, um, that a lot of organizations are, um, are moving uh, from one stage to the next. Uh, so, so you see, this is a uh, little different version of the PowerPoint than I have, but the same idea, I guess. Um, I'm always interested to see your slides change before your eyes. <laughs> So the, 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 uh, the, the notion is that uh, really a lot of organizations have started on the journey of adopting big data and the first waypoint is often organizations that are saying, look, we, our systems just aren't scaling anymore. We can't keep up with the volumes of data we've got. The cost is too high. We're tired of writing another big check to our database vendor. We're tired of having longer and longer batch windows. This has led to often what's the first wave of adoption of big data, which is let's just get more capable systems in place, start storing all the data, and maybe take some cost out of the system. And that's, that's a value add use case. But that's not ultimately the punchline of big data. That's not ultimately the highest value. That's where many organizations are. And in fact, it's been a very successful use case. And with the open source foundation of technologies like Hadoop and most of the popular NoSQL technologies, um, there's been a tremendous bottom-up adoption that many organizations have a, a project, someone's trying out these technologies, has been able to get some success and results, and it's laid a fertile foundation for some of the higher up use cases. We see the next stage is really one of agile insights, going from simply having the ability to store a lot of data in a raw form to starting to move faster, spending a lot less time wrangling data, spending a lot less time trying to organize to answer specific questions, and more time getting insight, looking at things. As we all know, agile software, or many of us don't know, 
Um, agile software development has become a big shift in the way we think about developing systems over the last 10 years. That nowadays, uh, the general philosophy is let's, let's focus on doing the least amount of work to get to some results, get something in front of people, and test and learn. So analytics is right for the same revolution. And big data, with its emphasis on delaying the structure of information, being able to work with information a variety, with great variety, and, and figuring out what the meaning is based on the question when asked, is allowing the same kind of agility, the same kind of empowering smart people to ask questions of data and invest in producing refined structure when the results are proven. So that really shifts the workload from a lot of time wrangling data and anticipating to a lot of time building insights and driving results in the business. And the final stage is really business optimization. Going from having facilities to look at the data to start to optimize, to start to automate the answers that you might have. Building predictive models, getting people out of the business of making manual decisions. And we see this a lot, whether it's in advertising, whether it's in recommendation engines, whether it's in proactive service for device failures, that organizations are starting to say, look, instead of having a bunch of analysts maintaining a, a set of business rules that, get, that they're manually deciding all the time, how do I add another rule, how do I tweak this, try to use machine learning and try to let the data speak and build automatic and trained models to, to automate most responses and let smart people work on continually improving those models and continually refining the rules. So we see that this is a, the transitions that organizations are going through as they adopt big data technologies to drive to these advanced analytic applications. If we go to the next slide here, uh, we'll see that you know, we think, in, in, for example, in the financial services industry, um, there is, uh, do we have a next slide? So if we, if, in the next slide, you know, we think it's worth looking at being here in New York. Um, some of the uh, financial services and how some of these technologies might have an impact. Except we're on slide four, and I can jump back to slide three. Um, you know, let's see contrast between traditional approaches to working with data and what's now possible. So uh, the classical techniques that we've often seen are well understood. Hey, we'll take a small sample of data. We'll have an established model. We'll use something like an expensive, high-end tool like SAS to build a well-understood model, whether it be for risk or, or whether it be used for trading strategies. Use that little sample of data, a well-understood model, and spend a lot of time uh, working on the margins. And the big data approach comes in and says, what if we could store 100 times as much data? What if we could give analysts access to a personal supercomputer to do their own risk calculations, their own analysis? What if we could bring in new data sets? How would that change the game? And what we're seeing is innovative organizations are really starting to wake up to the power of having these new tools, these new technologies that give far more cost-effective computation, far more flexibility in the way you write queries and, and analyze data, but ultimately, they're driving to a new set of results where data scientists and data analysts and domain experts in the business are cooperating to produce uh, significant results. In the financial industry, whether it's risk management, whether it's retail banking, or whether it's uh, trading, seeking alpha, there's a range of applications that innovative firms are using big data for. So I'm certainly, I think they were, were excited about helping uh, enterprises in the financial industry, whether it's exchanges or information publishers or asset managers or banks or companies that are uh, in other industries, such as some of the large technology firms, really take advantage of these big data techniques. And, and one thing that I think is important too to note is uh, that the high value applications for big data are coming ultimately from new data and combining data. So um, you see a lot of a lot of early startups have hung their hat on, hey, we found a really interesting application on one data set. Maybe it's a, a feed from an advertising source or a given social media source and say, hey, we can do some interesting packaged work, provide sentiment monitoring, provide some recommendations on this standard data set. And there's clearly value in that. But we think that the big value out of big data is ultimately going to come from blending data sets, taking your own internal data sets that's unique to your business, combining it with external data. Second party data that's not public, but that you can do you can acquire and develop from business relationships, as well as public data, and being able to combine them to create something that's unique for you, that drives engagement for your customers, that defines your brand, that defines what's your unique value proposition. 
So we think that the, the future of big data is going to be these compound interactive applications that engage users and really create a sustained competitive advantage and value for the business. And then looking at the, the last slide, um, you know, we, we think that because it's such an early stage that it's really important to think about big data from a test and learn perspective. That you want to have an agile cycles of how quickly can we release something. You want to push to how fast can you get something out of the market and get some feedback and learn from it. How much parallelism can you include? How much can you empower individuals in the organization to do their own experimentation, have their own ideas? This is second nature to startups. It's, it's the way startups tend to operate. But there's a real need for larger firms to embrace the spirit of innovation and to recognize that it's a new field and a new day. And the opportunities uh, of using these technologies are great, but then you have to embrace this. You don't, the, the, the rule book has not been written. The time is now to experiment, to get out there, to deploy capabilities and to learn. And um, this, the sooner you get something in the hands of your users, in the hands of your uh, customers and, and, and supply chain partners, the sooner you're going to be able to create results and improve. So we think that this is going to be a new foundation for economic growth, and it's going to be a big deal over the next 10 years as, as uh, companies start to embrace data as a core competitive advantage. So I'm certainly honored to be here on the panel, and thank again, Matt, for the chance to be here.